This physcast is going to look at heat flowing through a material by conduction. Pause the video for a moment and read the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, you can see that what's being asked is a temperature halfway along this rod that is made of two materials joined together. In the diagram here, we have the gold rod, which will indicate with the letter G, and the silver rod, which will indicate with the letter S, joined together. One end of the rod, the gold end, is held in boiling water, which will have a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. The other end of the rod, the silver end, is being held in ice water, and ice water in equilibrium will have a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. And clearly with one hot end and one cold end of the rod, there will be heat flow along the rod from the hot end to the cold end. An important point to realise, even before we begin the calculation, is that this heat flow must be the same all the way along the rod. If that was not the case, if there was more heat flow in one place and less in some other place, that means one place would be heating up, another place would be cooling down, and our assumption here is that the heat flow is in steady state. There are hot ends and cold ends of the rod, but at all locations the amount of heat that flows per unit time is the same. And what we're trying to calculate, as the question asks, is this temperature at the midpoint. Let's call that T with a subscript M for the temperature at the midpoint. The relationship that we know for heat being conducted through a material is that the rate at which that heat flows, which remember is how much heat is flowing per unit time, and it's actually a power, is given by minus the thermal conductivity, K, times the area through which that heat is flowing, multiplied by the gradient of temperature. And remember that minus sign there is telling us that the temperature flows in the opposite direction to the thermal gradient, that is, it flows from high temperature to low temperature. In fact, for our particular problem here, because it is nice, uniform, steady state flow, this temperature gradient here we can simply think of as being a change in temperature over some distance delta x. And as we've already indicated, importantly here, the heat flow through the gold must be the same as the heat flow through the silver. And that's going to be our starting point for the calculation. Let's write down this equality here in terms of the quantities that we know. So we'll have minus K of the gold times the area of the gold multiplied by the change in temperature across the gold section over the size of the gold section. That must equal exactly the same expression but now for the silver. Thermal conductivity, the area, the change in temperature, and the length of the object, in this case the silver end of the rod. Now there's some quite straightforward simplifications here. Because these rods are identical, they will have the same area. So the area cancels on both sides of that equation. And they will also have the same length. So this distance over which the heat is flowing also cancels on both sides of the equation. And of course the negative sign here, which is really only telling us about direction, will also cancel. And so what we're left with here is a reasonably simple expression that tells us the thermal conductivity of gold times the change in temperature over the gold section will equal the thermal conductivity of silver multiplied by the change in temperature over that silver section. We can now write down these temperature changes in terms of this temperature at the midpoint. So for gold, that change in temperature is 100 at the hot end minus the temperature in the middle. And on the silver side, it's going to be the temperature in the middle minus the cold end, which in this case is zero. What we're trying to find is that temperature in the middle, so we can collect the terms that have the temperature in the middle in them, and in this case it's reasonably straightforward. It's going to be Kg plus Ks, so they each multiply with the temperature in the middle, and moving things across to the other side, we simply end up with 100 multiplied by the thermal conductivity of gold, Kg. So we can rearrange this one last time to find the temperature in the midpoint will simply be 100 times the thermal conductivity of gold divided by the sum 
of those thermal conductivities. And we can put some numbers in here now. This is going to be 100 times, as our data indicates here, for gold it's 310. And it's in SI units, watts per meter degree Celsius. That's what we need. Divided by 310 plus 418 for silver. And if we do that calculation, we find we get a number of 43 degrees Celsius. And I've just put that to two significant figures. So there's our answer there. Of course, we should double check that that makes sense. Uh, the first check we can make upon that is that it is indeed a temperature between 100 and 0. That's important. If we've made an error somewhere in our calculation here and got a number, perhaps it was 150 degrees, we could see that wouldn't be possible. The temperature at either end of this is 100 and 0, so the midpoint must be at some location in between, and 43 is definitely in between. Interestingly, you can see that 43 is, uh, is different to 50 degrees. We don't have our 50 degree location at the middle there. Um, but indeed, we'll have the 50 degrees. If that's going to be 43 degrees, right there, the midpoint there, you can see from 0 to 43 at the silver end, from 43 to 100 at the gold end, our 50 degree point must be somewhere along here. Now, does that make sense? One way to check that that does make sense is to go back to this expression just here. This expression tells us that it's the thermal conductivity multiplied by the temperature difference that must be the same for both of these rods. Again, that really comes back to the idea that the heat flow must be the same all the way along the rod. So this tells us that whichever one has the larger thermal conductivity must have the smaller temperature gradient. And in fact, you can see that's true. Silver has the larger thermal conductivity and it has over its length only a 43 degree temperature difference. Whereas along the uh, gold, it has a 57 degree change. It kind of makes sense in that the one that has better thermal conductivity needs a smaller temperature change to get the same heat flow.